Welcome and congratulations. You have been awarded Bean Time. That means your work is entering a new phase, but it also means that you'll be asked to write a DMP. It was the first time in uh, my research uh, activities that uh, I was asked to make uh, a clear plan about data management. At the beginning, I feel it a little bit confused. No worries. It's not as bad as you might think. And we're here to guide you through it. But first of all, why do we need a data management plan exactly? Everybody should have one because it, it, additionally to just the common sense of being able to find your data, use it and reuse it, it's also a requirement by the funding agencies in, in Germany and in Europe uh, from the EU. And out of just a good reason for sharing resources and uh, we talk about a green and circular economy and of course uh, not only plastic bottles can be recycled but data can also be, be recycled if it's, if it's made useful. This plan helps us to clearly see our work, our own work, uh, to more clearly think about our own work and uh, to carefully storage our results. If you have lots of data and you can't sort out uh, one kind of data from the other, then it's as bad as having no data or having bad data. Additionally, it's really important for us to be able to collaborate with other people. And to collaborate, you have to be able to share the data in a meaningful way. Not sure where to start? The first thing to do is to ask for help. I even asked the European Project Office uh, for help. They tried to, to help me a lot. And even uh, they have organized Zoom meeting with me and my uh, academic mentor. Is there a data steward or a data manager in the facility hosting your experiment? If not, maybe there are existing tools available. There are usually online questionnaires that will, once you've answered all the questions, which can be a lot, generate your data management plan in the format you need. If such tools are available, there might be documentation to go along, so it's a good starting point. Nothing like that at your facility? Then just find the template your funder is asking for and keep watching. If necessary, there can be an embargo period of three years before your data has to be available to the wider community. Available means published in a public and curated repository and assigned a persistent identifier, usually a digital object identifier, DOI for short. Many PAN facilities offer such a service now. The advantage is that it makes your data findable in federated search engines like data.panosk.eu or the European Open Science Cloud. And if your hosting facility doesn't have that yet, you can use Zenodo. Having your data there also means that you will benefit from the storage and long-term preservation policies of those facilities. Data should be kept for a minimum of 10 years, and its metadata record should be kept forever. For that, the facility needs to have an idea of the approximate number of files and the size of the data you'll produce, so they can book the space for it. If you're lucky, your Beamline will support the Nexus format, which will make your data easier to share, visualize, and analyze, because it's a standard in the PAN community. However, your Beamline or analysis tools may, on the contrary, provide proprietary formats that are difficult to process outside of the closed environment that they're in. In this case, and if you have no alternatives, describe the environment needed the best you can and try to have at least the final process data on a more standard format. In all cases, you'll need metadata to make sure that your data is appropriately annotated. What we do is each data set is assigned a set of metadata. This is something very similar to a catalog in a library, which tells you what you would find inside the book. It's not all the information that's in the data file, but it's the essential information that you need to refine data that you collected at a certain point in time and to know what experiment you did, what kind of sample you investigated, and which methods you used for that experiment. Every time you can, use persistent identifiers to describe the metadata fields unequivocally. This is relevant for research papers, of course, but also datasets, persons, instruments, and techniques. You can imagine the information a bit like a family tree. 
For future science, it will be important to know how we got there. Thanks to cloud infrastructure, you can bring compute power to where the data is and reproduce the right environment for the data analysis, so you or your colleagues can rerun analysis workflows from anywhere. Software is really crucial in our case, and uh, I develop a software, so we plan to make Nexus available on Visa so that collaborators from all over the world can work together on one project by using the DISI computing infrastructure, bringing people together um, to evaluate their data together. Your data will already be accessible to a larger public, thanks to the background work done by the PAN facilities and the European Open Science Community. And if you manage your data well, recognition and acknowledgement amongst the wider community is way more likely. Your data may even be reused by other teams, making it so much more valuable. Usually when, when we do an experiment, we have a, an, an aim or an objective in that experiment and the whole experiment is, is targeted at, at this topic. But there are many examples where you get a lot of extra data that can also be useful for other things. For one example, if you look at tomography and if you take a tomography of a fly and somebody, the group who apply for the beam time are really interested in the eye. But of course, uh, you get the whole head of the insect when you do the tomography. And then it's really nice if this data is shared so that other groups can then go ahead and look at the teeth or the nose or some other part of the insect. So you, you never really know what will happen with the data in the end. It's also very important to see how data are processed. Um, for reviewers, for other scientists, this is very important in science. Every experiment must be reproducible, so also the, um, the data evaluation must be reproducible. Otherwise, you can get to different results using different software tools. And for complete reproducibility, you can describe and publish your workflow along with training material. However, you may not find all the answers right away, specifically on the metadata. That's fine. A DMP is a living document. It's just important to ask the questions. It is not, not possible uh, to do everything without uh, help. It is possible with help of other uh, people, specialized uh, staff members, and this is okay. Thanks for taking care of your data and all the best for your research.